His wife tells us what she knows about that night and is grieving family on what they're demanding from that night. Justice for George. Welcome to Scarborough Country, no passport required, only common sense allowed. From the press room, to the courtroom, to the halls of Congress, Joe Scarborough has seen it all. Welcome to Scarborough Country. Thanks for being with us tonight. On June the 25th, George Smith married Jennifer Hagel. It was a storybook wedding, a picture book ceremony in Newport, Rhode Island. And the couple set out on the perfect romantic cruise in the Mediterranean, ready to begin their wonderful life together. But in the early morning hours of July the 5th, as a Royal Caribbean ship sailed from Greece to Turkey, passengers reported hearing a loud thud in the middle of the night. Another passenger took this photo of a bloodstain on an awning just below the Smith's cabin. And when everybody awoke that morning, George Smith was gone. What followed can only be described as a botched investigation, with a scene that was cleaned up by the cruise line, with witnesses who were interrogated by Turkish authorities with a screaming baby in the room, and with a ship that hurriedly left the Turkish port as if nothing had ever happened the night before. We're going to be spending the full hour examining the mystery of George Smith's death and the mystery of the investigation into what happened. And we're going to be raising some big questions about how the cruise industry protects passengers. But first, at the heart of this story is a tale of two young people who loved each other very much. Last week, five months after her husband disappeared, Jennifer Hagel Smith finally broke her silence and sat down with us in Washington. And she told me about her husband, George. George really was the all-American guy. George had it all. He was funny and romantic and handsome. And, um, he was a good friend. He's a loyal person. He, um, he's the type of person that you're proud to bring home to mom and dad. Um, my dad was so proud to say yes when he asked me for my hand in marriage. Um, did George what, do that? Did he go yes, ask your dad? Your he dad's did. a big guy. Yes, he I did. would be very polite when yes, I would ask your dad, but he went and. He did. And um, he, my dad actually couldn't barely contain himself. He ended up telling a few people. Um, <laughs> not my mother. Yeah. She was furious that yeah. she, did, she found out last. Um, but yeah, he was um, really proud of George and, and proud of us. and. Everyone was so excited for us and starting our life together. They were, um, both of our parents were just beaming at our wedding and it was just the perfect day. Um, it was magical. Everybody just that was there just said, this is something, you know, this is one of those once in a lifetime days and we're so happy to be a part of it. And it was, it was just that. It was the best day of my life. And um, George and I were so excited to even come home from our honeymoon to look at wedding pictures and look at our wedding video and just, you know, talk to people and just say, didn't we have such a great time? And all right, so, so talk about that day. That day um, was Mykonos, and this was, you know, one of our, was going to be one of our best days. George was so excited. He, George loves Greece, and um, he just couldn't wait to get off the boat that day. So um, the two of us had, you know, walked around for a little bit and we stopped and had lunch and um, we just sat and you know watched people walking by and it was just such a breathtaking place that we were saying god I can't wait to come back here and mm -hmm. um, we had visited a couple of ports already but this was definitely just breathtaking um, I kept snapping pictures of George and he was saying I think that you know 200 pictures was okay we only <laughs> halfway through the trip and he was happy you he were was happy. so happy and we just said this is this is life and um, in fact we were talking about we said maybe we should buy a timeshare here or maybe we yeah. should buy a you know retire here which is great and, and um, he said well maybe he, I, he said how would your you know how would our parents feel about that and and um, George says yeah, I really don't care it's too beautiful so. <laughs> <laughs> so what really happened that night George disappeared 
One of the first and most crucial pieces of information comes from a passenger in the cabin right next door to the honeymoon couple. Cleet Hyman told me about what he heard in those early morning hours before he was even interviewed by the FBI. Well, our first uh, contact with the couple next door was the second night of the cruise. Um, they appeared to be having quite a party in their, their room. It lasted from about 11 o'clock at night till uh, well past 3 in the morning. Uh, our next time, we'd only pass them in the hallways. We really had no contact with them. However, uh, early on the morning of the 5th, at about 4 in the morning, we were awoken uh, by uh, loud Excuse yelling. me, Cleet, I mean, and that was the night, the 5th was the night he disappeared, correct? The morning of the 5th, night of morning the 4th, of the fifth. morning of the 5th. And so that's yes. the night you take this. The, okay, go ahead, I'm sorry. Yes, we were awakened uh, about 4 in the morning uh, by loud yelling coming from the cabin. Um, it sounded like people uh, cheering, uh, like a drinking contest type thing. Um, there appeared to be numerous people in the in the room. Uh, this went on two separate times uh, that we know of, uh, the one that woke us up and then one about a minute later. Uh, then all we could hear was loud talking in the room for, oh, probably three minutes. Uh, at that point, we heard people just outside of the door of the cabin. Uh, it sounded like people maybe saying good night, and uh, it sounded like maybe three or four people. Uh, at that point, uh, we heard uh, talking in the room off and on for the next about five minutes. But then all of a sudden there became some very loud arguing out on the uh, balcony. This went on for a couple of minutes and then we heard someone saying good night, good night, just repeatedly like they were trying to usher uh, people out of the room. Um, after about oh, 30 seconds of that, we did hear the, the cabin door open and some male voices outside, and then uh, the males went down the hallway. You're in there, you're awakened in the middle of the night, you hear voices, a party going on, they took it outside. Soon, uh, you said an, an argument began. I also understand that you heard something that you said sounded like furniture being moving. Uh, moved around out there, and then you, you, you said, I, I understand that you heard a thud. Talk about that. Yes, well, after the uh, young men left the room, for next about five minutes, uh, you could hear someone going about the cabin and opening and closing uh, cabinet doors, uh, and it also sounded like they were actually moving furniture around. Uh, that went on for, like I said, five to seven minutes, and then uh, it what, went what, what time out was into that, the balcony. Cleet, what time uh, was that? A little about? after, uh, approximately 4:20 in the morning. So they're cleaning up the place. Somebody was cleaning up the the place at 4:20 in the morning. Well, that was the assumption I made that maybe that they were straightening up a little bit. Um, however, the noise went out onto the balcony, and you could hear furniture being moved, and then at times it sounded like furniture was being actually picked up and dropped. Uh, that they weren't too careful about, you know, the way they were moving the furniture. Uh, I only heard one voice in the cabin uh, at that point. Uh, this uh, outside, the movement went, was sporadic. It, stuff would be moved, uh, then there'd be some silence, then furniture would be moved again. Uh, then there was just total silence. Uh, this was probably uh, maybe two minutes or so of total silence, and then that horrific uh, thud. Talk about that horrific thud. Well, the thud, uh, originally, my first thought was someone had fallen on the balcony, but it was uh, way too loud for that. Uh, so, 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 so that night, you thought somebody may have been either fallen overboard or been thrown overboard and hit the balcony? No. At no point did I really, that didn't go into my mind because the, it actually reverberated uh, in the room and, and on our balcony. So I thought maybe uh, someone had fa literally fallen on their balcony uh, mm. or that uh, they had thrown furniture overboard. Because of the, the impact, it sounded like something uh, very heavy and my first thought was maybe uh, throwing furniture overboard.
So what happened the next morning when you woke up? Obviously, you, you, you heard the loud thud, went to sleep, woke up the next morning. What did you do then? Well, a little after 7 o'clock in the morning, I had gone out to look at the scenery uh, on our balcony uh, as we were pulling into port. And I did look around the partition between our balcony and the balcony of the Smiths. And I was curious whether, in fact, the furniture had been thrown overboard. Uh, however, everything uh, was still on the balcony. Uh, I noted that the door going into the room was open, uh, but there didn't seem to be anything of any uh, importance. So, so the furniture, all the furniture was still up there accounted for, so obviously the thud you heard was not a piece of furniture from the balcony. Did you talk to investigators that morning? Uh, no, I did not. Uh, we uh, went ahead and went into Kadasi, uh, Turkey. Uh, we had a tour, and uh, I did not speak to uh, anyone until we returned. As our Scarborough Country investigation continues, we'll hear from George Smith's parents and sister, who are demanding answers from the cruise line. And later, Royal Caribbean responds to what Jennifer Hagel Smith happens to her in the tragic hours after her husband vanished. If you love the convenience of shopping online, but you want to get a hold of your stuff ASAP, Circuit City makes it simple. Just buy online at circuitcity.com and choose the in-store pickup option. We're the only place that guarantees your purchase will be ready for pickup in 24 minutes or less. If it's not, we'll give you a $24 gift card. It's that simple. Circuit City. What happens when you build a car around the concept of precision? You go beyond washer fluid to heated washer fluid. Beyond heated seats to heated and cooled seats. Beyond safety features like advanced airbags to one year of OnStar that could help save your life. Beyond a quiet cabin to one that's quieter on the road than a Lexus ES330. That's precision. And then some. Introducing the all-new Buick Lucerne. Beyond precision. Coming up, missing honeymooner George Smith IV's family wants answers from the cruise industry. Their first interview, next. I really can't stay. Baby, it's cold outside. I've got to go away. Baby, it's cold out there. This evening has been you so drop very there. nice. I think of my hands, the cold is I ought to say no. No, no, sir. At least I'm going to say that I tried. I really can't stay. Oh, but it's cold. We have 11 Palestinian names. Each had a hand in planning Munich. We want them dead. From Steven Spielberg, the acclaimed director of Schindler's List and Saving Private Ryan. You don't know what it is not to have a home. Comes the film Time Magazine calls his boldest feat yet. Every civilization finds it necessary to negotiate compromises with its own values. Munich, rated R, and select theaters everywhere January 6th. Toyotathon is back. For 27 years, it's been the greatest time to buy the Toyota you're looking for. Quality, selection, value, you'll find it in every vehicle we build. With special financing on Toyota's bigger models. Or you can lease Tundra for just $219 a month. Lease the spacious Sienna for $229 a month or get a $2.79 a month lease on 4Runner. The place is your Toyota dealer. The time is now. Treat yourself today. Toyota, moving forward. What do you see here? I see mozzarella and gorgonzola and a bottle of Nando wine. And here? A great picnic with a bottle of Nando wine. You see something here? A cozy dinner for two. No Nando wine? Ah. Uh just arrived. A bottle of Nando wine. My dear man, you have a Nando wine fixation. Me? They're your pictures. Oh. <laughs> George Smith's family wants answers. They filed a lawsuit against the cruise line and they fought for the recent congressional hearings that rocked the cruise industry. 
This is a family that kept its silence month after month, even as they got no answers from the cruise lines about what really happened to their beloved son. When they were ready to talk, they came and talked to us first. Uh, Jennifer's father called us about 6.30 in the morning, uh, July 5th, and said that something terrible had happened to George. Um, and, and so that's where we learned of the news. But of course, our initial reaction was, oh, well, He's maybe he him. fell asleep someplace. Yeah. He's I mean, a party you animal, you know. He yeah. likes to party, George yeah, does. Yeah, he, he was having the time mm. of his life. You yeah. know, he must have fallen mm. asleep somewhere. And I said to Royal Caribbean, I said, um, he hadn't been missing for 24 hours at this point. And I said, have you done a search? And they said, yes, we did a search. I said, will you be doing another search? And they said, no, we've done one search and we're finished with our search. Absolutely. And not. this was, you know, before we had heard about the blood on the overhang. And they refused to do any further searches for George, even though he had only been missing not even 24 hours. I think the hardest Second part day. was when we were told that the search was being called off of oh, the right, water. Right. Four because days. Um, we had it was four or five extended. days later. I was pushing to extend the search, and the Greek authorities agreed to extend the search. I was trying to get the U.S. Navy in, and you know we had contact with um, a lot of high-level uh, captains and admirals to extend the search, but we were told that if the American vessels went into a foreign waters, it would be a declaration of war without their permissions. When we went to Greece, what is it, a week later, we, we really still thought that maybe he was somewhere. And we went to the Coast Guard, we went to the hospitals, we went all around the hospitals, we put flyers out, didn't we? And um, we, went, we went searching for him myself at night time. And, and we left after about a week, because my daughter was alone at home. and. Um, we still just couldn't believe it. We couldn't believe that he was gone. And to this day, we still can't believe it. I mean, if, if we had the information about what happened to him, or if, or if mm. we had him, then we could sort of move on. But we don't have that. And, and it's just the uncertainty is what really eats away at us, I think. You talked about your son. Is there, is there a particular time when you miss your brother the most? Is it when you're with him, or? I think it's thinking about how my son's, you know, growing up from, from week to week and the fact that, you know, George doesn't see this. He sat up by himself a few weeks ago and George isn't here to see it. Uh, his two, first tooth came in two weeks ago and George isn't here to see it. I miss his phone calls two or three times a day and he wasn't a mama's boy. <laughs> not at all. He was no, not, he a was mama's boy, not a mama's boy. But he'd boy. call and say, Ma, and he'd tell me things two or three times a day. And I, I just have the cell phone and I think he's not calling anymore. And basically, I worked with George every day. So, <laughs> you know, when you walk in the door in the morning, it's not there. Tell people something you want them to know about George. We'll start with you. His, um, I think what's, what was very touching was when he met my son for the first time because Grayson was born in Hong Kong and we flew back for the wedding. He took a picture of Grayson on his cell phone and that was his screensaver and he emailed the photograph to all of his friends. And I just think, you know, that's one of the most recent things that really touched my heart before mm -hmm. we lost George. Mrs. Smith, what do you want people to know um, about yourself? His kindness. He always bought lovely gifts for people, didn't he? Always thought out well gifts, didn't he? He was always, you'd open these gifts and you think, how did he think of this gift? And he, he, this is what he always did. He had such kind, and his friends coming to me all the time and saying they have never met such a loyal friend. And the best man came to me the other day and he said to me, I will never have another best friend. Mm. Mr. Smith, what, what would you want to do? George has just George? been so special to me, you know, working with him and uh, sharing our life. And uh, he was just, he was, he just was always a, there. He was just family. If I had a problem with the computer, George was there. <laughs> He'd get very <laughs> antsy. <laughs> Dad, I, I don't want to do this again. <laughs> but he, he was yeah. always there for me, and, you know, um, it's just special. We were just a family. And. It's We've destroyed. broken apart. We've been destroyed, haven't we? Mm -hmm. And okay. we'd like to know why. In the weeks after George disappeared, Scarborough Country pieced together a timeline of events of what really happened that night. We tracked down guests who were in rooms on both sides of the Smiths, from Cleet Hyman, and they told us of the tremendous noise they heard from the Smiths' room in the critical hours that early morning. And that night, we were obviously in the cabin next door, and uh, this was the early morning of July the 5th. We uh, were 
having a wake-up call early because we were on a day trip that day. Normally, that's what we did on the cruise. Uh, we went to bed early, got up early, probably a little different schedule than what you saw of the uh, Smiths. Uh, we never saw them. We never not ran into them, and we only really knew what they looked like after we got back and, and really saw them on the, on the media. But about, uh, I would say, 3.30 in the morning, uh, that uh, fateful morning, uh, there was some voices outside, and it sounded like it was maybe in the hallway. I heard uh, what I would consider to be an American-accented voice of a male, and he said something to the effect of, uh, uh, you know, take it easy, George, or take care, George. And my wife uh, heard more clearly some other male voices, uh, and I'll let her describe a little bit about those. What were they saying, Pat? Well, all of the voices were very kind. That was the first thing that I noticed. The young boy sounded like a teenager. He did sound like a young voice. And I heard two voices that were a little quieter. I perceived them to be police officers or somebody from the cruise ship because I did not see them. But I perceived them to be somebody that was helping someone to the room. And they also were speaking very kindly. There was no type of altercation. And my perception at the time was that they were taking someone who was possibly drunk back to their room and getting them settled down. And the words we heard were, settle down, George. And that was that. And that was the last thing that we heard. Four o'clock, though, about 30 minutes later, though, everything just exploded and you started hearing things being thrown around the room. Is that right? Exactly. That's exactly right. What happened maybe, maybe 15 minutes, maybe 30 minutes later, after those voices basically stopped, uh, it sounded like somebody in the cabin next door was, was trashing the room. It sounded to me like somebody was in there just throwing furniture around. And the curious thing about that during that short period of time was there was no voices during that, that episode. Uh, it just was a lot of thumping and throwing things around. And that uh, a period of time ended with one big thump. And it sounded to me like somebody picked up the couch and threw it against the wall. And then it went quiet. And then it went absolutely no. quiet. We, no. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Pat. I'm sorry. Go ahead. We have a delay here. Go. Uh, I was going to say the thing that was unusual, too, because we were looking at each other and we were thinking, boy, do we have to report this? Because it was getting a little noisy. And I was saying, what in the heck are they throwing around? But there was not one voice. There was no grunt. There were no grunts. There were no sounds of pain. There w was no form of altercation in terms of verbalization. It was just physical. That's all that we heard. And when so it stopped, it, so it didn't. We it did. Yeah, it didn't sound like a fight was going on. I'm wondering though. You you just said, uh, Greg, that it sounded like around 4:15, 4:20 that somebody threw a couch up against the wall in retrospect. It sounds an awful lot like what Cleet Hyman said around 4.15, he heard a sickening thud. In retrospect, uh, do you think that may have been George's body hitting the deck? Yeah, I think it probably could have been because I think our stories are consistent in that area, about the same time and about this one big thud. So I think they're consistent there. Um, th now, this is a part of the story that is new. You all, you all, obviously, uh, uh, you and your, your timeline and Cleet uh, uh, Hyman's uh, 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 timeline just is, is almost lined up right on top of each other. But then you say around 4.30 or so, you heard knocks on the door and you looked outside of your door after the thud. And what did you all see? Well, yeah, this occurred. The thud, after the thud, it went quiet for a while, and then we heard a little tap, tap, tap at the door. Uh, my wife nudged me and said, Greg, there's somebody at the door. And I said, no, it's next door. So another little tap, 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 and she says, there's somebody at the door. So I, 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 I get up, I open the door, and I lean out, to, lean out and I see two uh, Royal Caribbean staff members knocking at the door of the George Smith cabin. And there was two of them, and they, they, I could tell they were Royal Caribbean because they had the white shirts on with the black pants and the RC on the shoulder. And I'll tell you exactly what I, what I said to those guys. I said, hey, you guys, you better get in there because that room is trashed. And now, they didn't say anything. They sort of gave me the high sign, like, OK, something like that. So I went back to bed and uh, went quiet again. And then maybe 15 minutes later, another tap, 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 tap at the door. And I ignored it that time. I stayed in bed. So my, my conclusion on all that is that they really didn't enter the room. And that's, that's puzzling because something really happened in that room. And I would have, would have expected them to 
you know, use their master key or their master card, slightly open the door of the room and say, uh, this is security, is there anything wrong in here? And I, that, that never happened. More of Jennifer Hagel Smith's story when the special edition of Scarborough Country continues. And I ask her about what happened that night, about the Russians that other passengers claimed she was with, and about what she thinks really happened to her husband. And later, the cruise line's response to what Jennifer says they did to her in the tragic hours after her husband vanished. Scarborough Country is brought to you by AT&T, introducing the new AT&T. Experience an all-wheel drive Cadillac at the season's best sales event. Going on now. Cadillac. Breakthrough. Now for a limited time, get a $500 season's best bonus, plus 0% APR financing for 60 months on all 2006 Cadillac Escalade models. Um, do you have any I can't believe it's not butter? I'm craving that rich butter taste. Hey, Nikos! The gold key. I can't believe it's not butter. Wow. Made with sweet cream buttermilk for a fresh butter taste that's naturally cholesterol free. Nikos, you missed a spot. I can't believe it's not butter. Outrageously great taste without the cholesterol. This holiday season, come to Lowe's, where great values on thousands of gifts are sure to bring good cheer. Now, only at Lowe's, get one of nine top quality tools absolutely free by mail when you buy any 18-volt Firestorm tool or combo kit. Or let them choose the perfect gift with a Lowe's gift card. And now Lowe's has NCAA-themed gift cards from your favorite schools. So come in or shop online at Lowe's.com and see why there's no place like Lowe's for the holidays. We had a merry time pillaging. But with so many people switching to Capital One, we've had to find new jobs. All we want for Christmas is our dignity. For low rates and great rewards, switch to Capital One. What's in your wallet? I'm making a list. The situation with Tucker Carlson is terrific, hilarious, fair and balanced. A show that really does deserve to be watched. Smart commentary on the big news and issues of the day. Watch The Situation with Tucker Carlson. The show that's so fast it's changing the pace of news. Tonight at 11 on MSNBC. Discover a uniquely rewarding gift-giving experience at Black Bear Wines and Spirits of Westport. Shop in the comfort of Westport's friendliest wine shop and make your selections for beautiful custom-created wine bags and gift baskets. Your extra special friend or customer deserves a membership in our very important Bear Wine Club. Each month, VIB members receive three exceptional wines, hand-selected by the Black Bear Wine professionals. This season, give the Black Bear experience Black Bear Wines and Spirits, 221 Post Road West in Westport. Sealy, Serta, and Simmons have all announced a big price increase on their mattresses. My prices were always less than the big three. Now the gap is bigger than ever. I mean, my prices are dramatically less. This twin set was $219, and you know what? It's still $219. This queen set was $399, and it's still $399. Was $799? Still $7.99. So come on down and feel the magic of My Bobs. Or buy online at MyBobs.com. A man of faith and influence who's touched the lives of millions around the world. Preacher, teacher, true believer, Billy Graham. MSNBC Saturday at 8. MSNBC on XM Satellite Radio, 24 hours a day. Coming up, I asked Jennifer Hagel Smith what happened the night her husband disappeared. And she tells us what happened when she found out he was gone. But first, here's the latest news you and your family needs to know. I'm Natalie Allen. In the news this hour, authorities have confirmed that a man's body found floating in the Atlantic Ocean several miles from the site of Monday's fatal seaplane crash was that of the last missing victim. The Chalks Ocean Airway seaplane crashed Monday afternoon, killing all 20 passengers and crew aboard. 
Defense Secretary Donald Rumsfeld says President Bush has authorized the drawdown of 7,000 troops in Iraq. It is believed to be the first of a series of U.S. combat troop reductions in Iraq in 2006. And for the second time in recent days, there are reports of a domestic spy program. A law enforcement official says the government has been monitoring radiation levels near mosques and the homes and businesses of Muslims. U.S. News & World Report says at least 100 sites were targeted. The FBI says it does not target any group. It only goes where the intelligence information takes it. That's a quick check of the news. Now we return you to Scarborough Country. Welcome back. Now, during our interview, Jennifer Hagel Smith was very open. But when we got to the issue of that terrible night when George disappeared, she was guarded. She says because the FBI asked her not to talk while they were ramping up their investigation. But Jennifer was willing to shed some new light on what happened the night George Smith IV, the love of her life, vanished. What can you tell us about that night? Um. I know you're doing your job and you have to ask, um, but again, my number one priority, and, I, and, I, and I'm going to say this again and again, is just, you know, doing what the FBI has told me and basically, you know, there's nothing that I'm going to sort of release that, that happened to me that night. Um, I'm excited in the future to be able to talk freely and openly um, because that will mean that the FBI solved their case. Yeah. And that will mean, you know, that I have freedom to speak and say, you know, whatever. How about leading up to, the, up to that night, the afternoon, the early evening? Uh, George and I probably got back to the ship, I want to say, around 6 p.m. or so. Um, times are a little difficult to remember now. But um, we, we, you know, we were planning on meeting um, a friend of ours, or a couple. It was another honeymoon couple that we had became fast friends with and we were spending probably most of our evenings with them. Um, they had already eaten so they said you two go on and you know we'll catch up with you later we'll meet you at 11 o'clock. So um, we had this just great dinner, a very romantic dinner and we we're just you know toasting to the future, toasting to life and um, just saying, God, we are the two luckiest kids in the world. And we kept saying that, and it's, you know, ironic now. We just kept uh. saying, you know, knock on wood, this is, life is so good to us. We are so lucky. You know, we have had so many opportunities in life, and here we are in the Mediterranean um, toasting to our future. And mm. it was, you know, a moment that I, will, that I won't forget. And, of course, you know, we were, met our friends, and um, the, the evening... Uh, goes on, of course, and obviously... At, at 11, did you meet in the we, restaurant? We all meet or? together. George and I, you know, go back to the room to, um, quickly, and then we, um, on our way up, he wanted to just drop off his sport coat. Um, because the other night when we were, we would usually meet our, our the, uh, this other couple, you know, we'd go to the casino, meet them, mm -hmm. um, just play it the crap table or play blackjack for a little while and call it a night. Um, this particular night we did our same routine. We, mm. you know, dropped off George's jacket and came back down and... What time was that? That they dropped off the jacket? Well, again, I know it's right. hard um, to remember exact time, but it's like around, around midnight, 11. 11, 11. 11. So, and, you know, and that's the point where, you know, I, and I can't speak of, and I, you know, I wish I could. I know that, um, there's a lot of questions that a lot of people have, and um, that's where sort of the so FBI you, you, you picks up the story. So you can't say what happened in the casino that night from that point on. Right. Is that where the FBI tells you not to talk? Right. Tell you about what about who you saw and... Yep, that's all under that same FBI category. Um, t can you talk about the, the Russian guys? Because at the beginning, everybody was looking at you. Because, and again, it wasn't just about you, it's... Which I didn't even realize, yeah. Yeah, but, yeah. but in any investigation, I think we talked about this, if, right. if the spouse dies, the first thing they do, they just play the numbers. It sounds cold and callous. Which they never tell you before you get married. Right, like something yeah. Something is going something to happen happens, to your spouse that, that you'll be looked at. That but. they look at you with suspicion. But, and then we started hearing about these Russian guys and some teenager from California. Yep, and I will just say that for, I don't know when people learned of certain details surrounding the case, mm -hmm. but I will say that 
I literally didn't watch any news um, mm -hmm. coverage for the first two months. So a lot of this information um, I found out in only the past few months. Really? Um, and as uh, George and Maureen have, have told you, they would take notes. George's parents would literally take notes watching your show and watching other shows. And that's some of the information that we've come to know since what happened um, has come from that. Can you talk about anything about these Russian guys? Was that the first night you saw them? Uh, I can't really, I wouldn't speak of those things because I think that um, it's not appropriate. Um, I think. You say it's not appropriate because the FBI told you not to talk about them? And they have families too, and I'm very sensitive to that. So I think that I'm, I'm very careful and guarded in, in anything I would say. It's just for, I'm sure this is a tough experience for anyone who's involved in it. Do you, uh, you think the FBI is going to solve this case? I hope so. Let me, let me, let me, let me ask you, do you, think the, do you think George is murdered? That's a good question. What do you think? I guess we'll see. Um, I'm looking forward to ending this investigation. I'm, I'm hoping um, the FBI said initially it'll be months, not years, and um, I'm going to remind them they have six more months because I'm hoping that they will come up with something. This is, I've been told that, you know, our case um, has more evidence whether it be, you know, blood stains on the awning or um, things of that nature that has more than any cases in the past. So I think that this is, this is, this could be the one, you know, mm -hmm. this could be the one for the FBI. I know that there haven't been many successful convictions in the past, but I'm, I'm praying this is the one. So we get through the night, you wake up in the morning, and there are two different stories about where you woke up, and again, one said you woke up in the room, the other said you woke up three flights up. Um, can you tell us where you woke up? It's nothing scandalous. I can't say that, if that's what people are wondering. Um, it's not scandalous. Yeah, but you can understand why right. they'd, the way they'd ask a question. Right, right. How do you of, think course, of course, of yeah. course. Um, sometimes, sometimes, you know, the answer or the truth is, is more basic or more simple than people like to think it is. Um, so people can, you know, read into that as they will. Um, but, but you've been told by the FBI not to talk about right, that. Right, right. And Jennifer says a nightmare was just beginning after she found out her husband was gone. When we come back, her story of what happened in the hours once George Smith IV went overboard. And George's parents tell me why they filed a lawsuit against a cruise line and the questions that they have to have answered about what really happened to their son. When winter skin hits, I itch. When it's way beyond dry, I itch. Unlike ordinary lotions, Gold Bond moisturizes and medicates to soothe and relieve dry, itchy skin. Ah. Gold Bond Medicated Lotion, the moisturizing fix that medicates the itch. At BASF, we don't make the sunscreen. We make it stronger. We don't make the helmet. We make it tougher. We don't make the bridge. We make it more durable. We don't make the car. We make it more colorful. We don't make a lot of the products you buy. We make a lot of the products you buy better. BASF, the chemical company. Nice suit. Thank you. Mine's redder. Well, uh, I bring the gifts of the season. Oh, really? I bring the low prices of the season. I slide down thousands of chimneys in one night. I'm hanging from hundreds of thousands of GM cars right now. I have a sleigh. Mine's better. The GM Red Tag event. We've made holiday shopping easy. The price on our tag is the price you pay, not a penny more. I have a lovely wife. Yeah, well, I live with my mother. I know. See some red, save some green. If you really like shopping online, but you don't like waiting and waiting for packages to arrive. Circuit City makes it simple. Just make your purchase at circuitcity.com and choose the in-store pickup option. We're the only place that guarantees your order will be ready for pickup in 24 minutes or less. If it's not, we'll give you a $24 gift card. It's that simple. 
Circuit City. Good people of Troy, accept this gift from your Greek friends. A wooden horse? Seems like the kind of thing that a small army could crawl out of at night and lay waste to our entire city. Have a nice day. Hindsight is easy. It's thinking ahead that's hard. But that's how Liberty Mutual serves our customers and why we're one of the world's leading insurance companies. Help keep my skin looking as young as I feel, I use L'Oreal Age Perfect. Age Perfect helps tighten sagging skin and visibly minimizes age spots as it hydrates with marine collagen. Look as young as you feel. Age Perfect Day and Night from L'Oreal Paris. What if there was a phone as advanced on the inside as it is on the outside? With the power to watch live TV, download music wirelessly, get news, sports, and weather at broadband speeds. With the Sprint Power Vision Network, now there is. Behold the ultra-thin, ultra-smart MMA900 by Samsung. The first phone that's equally brilliant inside and out. Just in time for the holidays. See the future of phones today. Exclusively available at Sprint or Nextel stores. Sprint. Yes, you can. The situation with Tucker Carlson is terrific, hilarious, fair and balanced. A show that really does deserve to be watched. Smart commentary on the big news and issues of the day. Watch The Situation with Tucker Carlson. The show that's so fast it's changing the pace of news. Tonight at 11 on MSNBC. George Smith and Jennifer Hagel Smith celebrating what was to be the beginning of a long life together. House, children, Big plans. But of course, in the early morning hours of July the 5th, all that tragically changed. As my exclusive interview continues, Jennifer shares the horrors of the hours after she found out from a group of Royal Caribbean employees that her newlywed husband was dead. It was three men um, dressed in white uniform from Royal Caribbean. They basically approached me and said, you know, your husband's gone overboard. And, you know, th they told me about the blood um, on the awning. And at that moment, I just, it's hard to remember, um, you know, my reaction to it at the time. But I just literally remember grabbing both of my arms and just squeezing so tight, thinking, I have got to still be dreaming. This has got to be a nightmare because. It's, it's, it was too much, like physically, emotionally, you're, you're, I, I couldn't quite c comprehend what they, were, what they were saying. It was just... Did they tell you he was dead? He'd gone overboard they, and died? They yeah. said he'd gone overboard and they found blood. And dur over, actually, they'd, um, I'd found out from them that they believed he went over in Greek waters. Um, and here we are in Turkey. So um, as you can imagine, you just... You, you, you play back um, in your mind at that time. Just the wedding and just everything just flashes and you think, like this is a sick joke, right? Because he's, you know, we just got married, right? You're, you're kidding me. Um, you just can't, you can't fathom the, like the reaction. I think I, I think I just felt so numb, and I just was so shocked. And I I really thought I was going to have a heart attack. Like my heart just um, it just was got like my chest just got so tight, and I just thought I didn't know what to think. I didn't know what to do. I, everything just everything I knew in that moment was just gone. Everything the world you knew ended. Everything was gone. If George is you know, we, we, we joke with each other, you know, you're the center of my universe, and we tell each other that all the time, and he really was. And when that's gone, what do I do? You know, what, what does my world revolve around now? It's everything we had planned together, our life, our future. Um, I think I, like my, literally everything was just flashing, flashing, my parents, his parents. Um, it was just, this can't be happening. This was the beginning of, from what I've read, just, an unimaginable, hellacious day. I was um, taken to a cabin um, somewhere in one of the lower decks, and I was told to take a shower. And I was then given Royal Caribbean T 
t-shirt, Royal Caribbean sh gym shorts, and Royal Caribbean tank top because they said we cannot, um, you know, obviously give you any of your own clothing, which was all in our room. I was eventually brought to a different meeting area, uh, again from Royal Caribbean. At this point now, there comes back the ship's officers, the, um, their, the security officers, and the ship's captain now. And I have now the honeymoon couple that George and I used to, you know, hang around with. They were also, you know, around or at my side, and um, they just basically said, you know, they want you to get off the ship in Turkey. They want you, to, you know, to come for some some questions. I didn't realize at that time that I was a part of or even a focal point of of an investigation or an interrogation. I was taken, you know, away from the ship. So now I'm in town. I'm the only one there of all the other passengers. I'm the only one who's in Turkey in that Turkish police station. And there I am with all of my, you know, Royal Caribbean logo attire and just feeling, just falling deeper into just this feeling of shock. Is that the first time it, that you had time to just sit back and realize that he wasn't coming back? Yeah, I think that, um, you know, there are certain things that remind you of somebody or, you know, that are, are personal. And um, I think, it, you know, it's a person's clothes, it's a person's and we have so many memories, and you know, and every oh, I remember when he wore that shirt. I remember when he did this, um, and there I am with all of his clothes and without George. After we first aired this interview, Royal Caribbean responded in a statement that said, in part, on July the fifth, Jennifer was accompanied by a ship staff member, a female guest relations manager, from approximately 10 a.m. to approximately 6 p.m. when she was placed in the care of a female U.S. consulate official and an FBI agent. The only time Jennifer and the guest relations manager were not together was for a brief period at the Turkish police station when Jennifer was being questioned by a Turkish judge, at which point she was joined by representatives from both the U.S. consulate and the FBI. Can there ever be justice for George? When we come back, his parents tell us what his legacy should be and what they're looking for from the cruise line that they feel let him down. And from the congressional hearings that rocked the cruise industry. Give fun. Give possibilities. From MP3 players to digital cameras to gift cards, this holiday, there are more gifts to give at Best Buy. You can get pretty congested when mucus moves into your chest. <coughs> Welcome to our new home. Very cozy. Make yourself comfortable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just ignore that. That's why there's Mucinex. It's specially made to break up mucus that causes congestion. Uh-oh. Uh, honeymoon's over! Ah, much better. And only Mucinex lasts up to 12 hours. Next time, I pick the place. Yes, dear. Mucinex in, mucus out. Brad, you still need to choose a Medicare drug plan. Oh, the big fight's about to start. Well, you don't want a big fight to start in here, do you? Besides, you could be saving money. Wait just a minute. How much? Says here Pacific Air could save you hundreds, even thousands of dollars. Thousands? <laughs> One thing the good old days didn't have is Medicare drug coverage. Now, if you're Medicare eligible, Prescription Solutions from Pacific Care makes the new drug coverage even better, offering a variety of plans starting under $23 a month in many states, with no $250 Medicare plan deductible. Call us anytime, 24 hours a day, to get our free prescription drug plan information kit. In addition to our Medicare drug plans, Pacific Care also offers dental and vision programs starting at just $5 a month. Call 
now to learn how to get coverage starting January 1st. If Fred could have done it, he would have. This is life. This is Life and Drive. Now lease the all-new Fusion SE for $199 a month for 36 months at your Tri-State Quality Ford dealer today. Touch history and feel the future. Israel. Who knew? Day, the supermodel that's turning her loss in last year's tsunami into much needed help for the disaster's littlest victims. Scarborough Country, MSNBC Monday at 10. George's family, his parents, and sister Bree are fighting for answers and for changes in the cruise industry that would keep something like this from ever happening again. Well, I think, you know, foremost in our mind is who would have done this and mm -hmm. why. Um, you know, we, we just, we don't know any of those things right now. We, mm -hmm. you know, there haven't been any arrests. We don't have, we know the FBI has a lot of information, but we don't have that information. And we just want to know what happened to him. And secondly, I think we'd like to know mm -hmm. where he is. I mean, I think mm -hmm. we have an idea, but if we had at least George, we could bury him and, and mm -hmm. have a grave to visit and pray for him, but instead, you know, he's, he's in the middle of the sea and, and we don't have anything of him. So it's, it's really devastating for my family. We've been robbed. We've really been robbed, haven't we? You've been robbed, you don't know yeah. who robbed you, no. you don't know no. how you were no. robbed. Our lives will never be the same again, never. And again, he's, he's with you mm. all the time. Oh. If, you, if you lose a son or daughter, it, it's for this reason, you know, we feel that uh, Congress needs to make changes in the laws so other families don't go through what we have to go through now and go through the suffering and the not knowing and we every need, day it's a struggle, you know, but um, for the we're first, holding it together. It seems to me like yeah, there were so many things the cruise industry right. could have done right. those first right. two days right. Right. to help solve this right. case. But, th but they didn't do it, no. did no, But at Turkey, it was a crime side. scene. At Turkey, that ship was a crime scene. It should, should have been, been a crime yellow scene. It should, should have been, been yeah. a crime scene. It was a crime scene. It should, it should have been, been yellow taped, passengers sent on their way that weren't guilty. They nope. could have, and then it paid to send them home. Now the FBI has to do a catch-up game. There's witnesses all over the world. You know, there's agents all over the world working on this case. And it's because that ship was not locked down. Let's talk about what you hope to accomplish if a lawsuit is, is filed. Mr. Mr. Smith, I'll start with you. You put the cruise line on notice that you want answers. Mm -hmm. um, if you don't get those answers and you're forced to sue them to get those answers, what do you want to come out of this terrible tragedy regarding your son? Well, you know, I want them basically to change their policy. It, it, it's got to change. They just can't do what they would like to do. Mm -hmm. There has to be regulations set down. If, uh, if there's a sexual assault on a boat, there should be, say, you know, rape kits or something like that. If there's mm -hmm. somebody overboard, they should follow certain procedures, stop the boat, not continue going on. You know, if uh, in Turkey, like there, they should have mm -hmm. stopped that boat and uh, just shut it down and uh, interview all passengers, keep them apart, do a proper investigation, not just some, ha you know, half deal that uh, they felt like putting a, a little bit of an effort before they took off for the next port. Mm -hmm. Uh, the FBI needs more power. There's no doubt about it. The FBI has minimal power. They do have power, but they need more power to go on and search mm -hmm. ships. Uh, it, it took them two or three days to get onto that boat, and they should have been able to walk on that boat immediately. I think there just has to be a, a, a load of changes made. Uh, for years, the Cruise Industry Council has been making changes that have been helped them. We've got to reverse this uh, trend and give the trend back to the people. 
protect the people that actually right. go mm -hmm. and right. pay, like mm -hmm. you said, all that mm -hmm. money right. that they make. My son, you know, all that money there and, you know, what they did, they didn't even, you know, it was just like, well, he's overboard and it's over. It was, it was, it was business. The, yeah. business, yeah. business yeah. as yeah. usual. All business. Yeah. It's all business. And the people that call you, um, they're not humane. They have, that they speak to you like, He's gone. This is an accident. That's the risk management yeah, department. Yeah, it's risk. And it's, it's they're not humane. It's they're not done humane. by every person you talk to that's had someone go overboard. It's like uh, after the one phone call to the cruise line, you're basically passed from one secretary to the next, and eventually you just get frustrated. And since you can't meet the six-month uh, time limit to file a lawsuit, then basically they've won. We'll be right back with more. Plus, the situation with Tucker Carlson is just minutes away. Stay with us. MSNBC, we're excited to say critics think Tucker Carlson is terrific. We'd also like to say they think he's smart, fair, balanced, and really does deserve to be watched. But in 10 seconds, we just don't have enough. Maury Povich earned our trust tackling problems. You are the father. Yeah. Now America can choose Maury's common sense approach or the radical ideas of Connie Chung. Weekends with Maury and Connie premieres January 7th at 10 a.m. on MSNBC. I'm Maury Povich, and I approve this message. up to you. There's one airline that can take you there. United. It's time to fly. What gives a man ultimate shaving performance? The Braun Activator System, the world's best self-cleaning shaver. And now you can experience the closeness and get $20 back with every purchase. Braun Activator's revolutionary smart foil with differently shaped holes captures hair growing in any direction for a closer shave in fewer strokes. And its advanced contour-hugging shaver head automatically adjusts to fit every face for maximum closeness and comfort at all times. The Braun Activator System has the world's most convenient and thorough cleaning center. A cleaning center so advanced, it automatically selects the best cleaning program to suit your individual needs. You simply load the replaceable cartridge to leave your Braun Activator feeling like a new shaver every day. Call 1-800-BRAWN-11 now for $20 off the Braun Activator System and experience the world's best self-cleaning shaver guaranteed. You're about to see a meeting of one of the most powerful financial organizations in the world. It's backed by the resources and the credit rating of the world's largest wealth management firm. And it's meeting today to answer the most important question on its agenda. So how am I doing? Wealth management at UBS. From wealth preservation to lending and investment. You and us. UBS. was founded by 16 aircraft engineers. Their spirit lives on. Introducing the all-new Saab 97X. When you used to build jets, you don't build just another SUV. Saab, born from jets. Jennifer Hagel Smith has established a reward of $100,000 for information leading to the arrest of the person or persons responsible for her husband's murder. Now, for more information, you can log on to www.hagelsmith.com. 
And if you have any thoughts on this case, any information that can help us out, help us all find justice for George, you can email me at joe at msnbc.com. Well, that's all the time we have for tonight. Thanks for being with us. The situation with Tucker Carlson starts right now. Hey, Tucker, what's the situation tonight? interview, Rita Cosby talked to his mother, father, and sister about their unanswered questions.